Hi guys, Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel, the Archie Luxury channel, and Archie Luxury Corporate. Today, guys, I want to answer the really hard question. The really, 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 really difficult question. The one, the white elephant in the room, the one that we don't ask. And the question is simple. Speedy, Speedy, or Zenith El Primero? Now, I've waited. I've waited to do this video because I was, I was so in love, enamored with the Zenith El Primero. And I wanted the emotion to settle down. I wanted to get on a natural keel. Because once you buy something, you have that euphoric rush. The brand can do no wrong. And you just... It changes your life. Now, the thing is, I, um, I wanted to give it time to bed in. Then I could be completely honest, completely truthful with the audience as to which which of these two pieces here is the perfect piece for you. Which one would I take? So let's just clarify why I've chosen certain models. So <laughs> these models here are in current production. They are available. The Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I didn't go for any fancy wancy special edition. This is the the most popular incarnation. House of Light Glass, non display back. It has the bracelet. This is the the Omega Speedmaster Professional. This is the 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 most original speedy available today we can walk in and buy that it now comes in a big box that's yeah that, 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 that's cool that's cool that's cool it's 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 a really cool piece the zenith el primero i've chosen is the zenith chrono master 1969 el primero chronograph so this piece here it's changed a little bit. This piece here is now 42 mils. This is, I think, reflects more of the current trend towards bigger watches. You can also get it in a 38, but I really do think if most people who are buying watches today and our number one market is Americans, Americans, and Americans would normally go for the bigger one. I'm a bigger, girthier guy. It's the hormones in the chicken. Uh, call it what you want. Uh, I think the 42 mil is the current size for chronographs. Um, I've gone for the open, the open, that's the exposed part there, because that is the most, um, this is kind of the flagship model for this, this iconic model. It's, um, it represents just the pinnacle of, uh, El Primero craftsmanship. You can get a full skeleton. I wasn't going to get fancy wancy. I wanted a honest to God modern incarnation of the Chrono Master Classic. So this here is what I think most people would go for. Just like I would say most people would go for this Speedy. Uh, we could have gone for a first Amiga in space. Yes, there's a number of incarnations we could have gone for. But I think this is the most honest, true to God version. Just like I think this is also the most true to God, honest version of the original piece. The open heart really, I think, is what most people would go for. They would go for it because it's just so cool. It's cool. It's fantastic. It has a display back. It has the Zenith El Primero movement. This is the movement that really has been so, so true to form. The Speedy is also using a very true to form. It's using a 1861 movement, which is basically an 861, which um, the 861 was their Omega. They moved away from the 321, which was a column wheel chronograph. They went to the 
the cams chronograph, uh, and I gotta say, that's what most people tie into that model there. The, um, the Zenith itself is a column wheel chronographs, uh, not a vertical clutch, but a still a very, very fine chronograph indeed. The two pieces in question, both, interestingly enough, have no date function. Both pieces are here, as you see, uh, a 42 mil. The Omega is on a steel bracelet. The Zenith is on a factory leather strap with deployant buckle. The Omega has a non-display back. The Zenith has a display movement. Okay, guys, let's talk figures. Let's talk numbers. The Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon, it is a manual wine chronograph. Originally came out in the late 50s. Mechanical. This was an iconic model. The legend is they were used by NASA in space after NASA tested a number of different chronographs, including Rolex. They settled on the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. Um, there's debate as to why didn't they go for an automatic one later on, but they'd already done the testing on the Omega. The other thing is, too, the gravity in space may not have been able to turn that wheel sufficiently to keep it wound. So the manual wind, it may be more uh, suitable to uh, low gravity environments. The Omega itself there, buying one of these today, you can get them as cheap as $3,600, well, $3,599 at Joma Shop. Uh, in the Australian market, you would pick one of these up here. In Australia, they're about 6500 Aussie dollars. Um, you can pick these up second hand for about 4,000 Aussie, about three, low threes Aussies on the second-hand market for a really nice example. The Zenith itself there, the Zenith itself there, it is a, um, it's an interesting critter indeed. It uses the automatic, this is was the race, 1969 was the time, the same time that man stepped foot on the moon, and the race was on to launch the first automatic chronograph. Uh, Zenith probably didn't get there first, but they probably did the best execution. Because we're brand snobs! We don't recognize the Japanese 6139. No, no, no. We don't recognize that because it's not a luxury watch. And uh, yes, let's just leave it at that. I gotta tell you, gotta tell you, gotta tell you. This piece here itself there, what do you pay for them? Well, in Australia, they're about 10,000 smackaroonies! $10,000. Uh, you may get a little bit of a discount. Uh, you're probably looking on the second-hand Aussie market about 7000 Convert that to US dollars. We're looking uh, <clears throat> high fives, high fives for a nice second-hand piece. So when you compare the two, high fives, second-hand, this is... This is uh, in US dollars and low mid threes. So there is a bit of a premium to pay for the Zenith. That premium is basically because it is a more expensive piece new. You're probably paying about 30, 40% more for the Zenith than you are for the Amiga Speedmaster. <laughs> is it worth it? Well, you're getting an automatic. They're two different type pieces okay as far as the two pieces go the omega itself there it's using a very legendary movement the three two one movement which variations of that movement found their way into really high-end brands and models ah uh, this is one of the best manual wine chronograph movements of all times we're talking three two one the 321 change to the 861. Um, the 1861 is basically the same with a little bit of plating for cosmetic reasons. But it's a great, great piece. The Zenith itself there, it uses the Chrono, the El Primero, El Primero Automatic, the first integrated. Well, let's ignore Seiko as well there because we don't like Japanese watches. Um... The integrated 
integrated chronograph function, a very, very well-regarded function. In fact, it was so good, Rolex decided on it when Rolex, in 1988, eventually went onto the automatic chronograph bandwagon. So, as far as they go, which one would I pick if I could only pick one? Which watch would I pick? That is a very, very good question. Very, very good question indeed. And um, I, I think they're both iconic. They're both very iconic. They are both very, very cool pieces. The Zenith itself there, automatic. The Omega Speedmaster Manual Wind. Um, newbies, you've got to understand the history of chronographs, the history of Omega, to really appreciate the Manual Wind movement. That's something about newbies that really irritates me is that they want this in automatic, which is just so wrong, so wrong on so many levels. Between the two pieces, which one is the better piece? Which would I choose if I could only have one? If I could only have one, that would be a very, very hard choice indeed there. The um, the Zenith itself there does have more expensive servicing costs because it's an automatic. It's also a high beat automatic. That's right, 33600 beats per hour. So uh, the, 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 the Zenith itself is a more expensive watch to service and maintain. Uh, both very iconic, probably um, in chronograph circles. Both very, very legendary pieces. The Omega is probably more out there. It's more in the marketplace because of Omega's mass exposure. The Zenith, it was a bit of a sleeper. It came back in recent times. It's starting to really kick ass as a value for money piece of horterology. Both pieces are absolute sensationally good value. Absolutely. Both pieces are amazing. Both pieces have that special it factor. Um, both pieces are amazing. Both pieces are gorgeous. Which one is better? Well, they're both pretty damn incredible. Uh, for the money, I think both of them are just absolute Stunners, steel stunners. Which would I choose if I needed to select one or the other? Well, I gotta tell you, in all honesty there, I think if you could only pick one, I think, to be honest with you, you would have to pick. You would have to pick. Which one would I pick? Which, 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 which one would I pick? Oh, that is so hard. It cuts so deep. It's cut so badly. We need, we need some painkillers about now. Um, which would I choose if I could only pick one? Well, naturally, you know, I think I would go for the Zenith. The Zenith. The Zenith. The Zenith. Because it's an automatic. It's also legendary. And it's a little bit more shy. See, the problem is the Speedmaster is even known for non-weezers. Non-weezers know about the Speedy, and uh, that isn't really a good thing. We want to keep this hobby to our own elite circle. We want the alumni only. We don't want normal punters knowing about wristwatches. So I, I would have to say, I'd definitely say the Zenith. If you had the money to pay the bit extra, uh, Zenith, Zenith, Zenith. It's well regarded. You are regarded as a Weiss if you have a Zenith. Okay, end the story. Zenith is the brand to have. It's, you're a Weiss. The Omega, well, you could be a science nerd. You could be an astrology nerd. You could be a, you know, it's just too out there. The Zenith, however, it says, hey, you are a true-blooded Weiss. Weiss, Weiss, Weiss. So I, I think out of the two watches, they are both incredibly good watches um i i think the zenith just it's just it's unfair because it's unfair because of the fact that it's unfair because the Omega is so good it's the Omega is so good they're both amazing there is no bad decision there I think most people who could only afford one would go for the Amiga, however, because it's cheaper, 
it's more iconic and they can add the Zenith later, which is fine. There's not a problem with that there. But both of these chronographs, they are legends, absolute legends. If I could only pick one, Zenith, 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 definitely Zenith. I cannot live without the Zenith. The Zenith is amazing. Uh, the Omega, equally as amazing, but just a little bit more common, a little bit more common. So guys, that is the answer. I think the Zenith, if you could only pick one, you'd go for the Zenith. However, if you did go for the Amiga, it ain't the end of the world. It's not a terrible choice. It's quite reasonable, quite reasonable indeed. So guys, I hope it helps. I hope it helps. If you were on the knife edge, I hope I've pushed you into the Zenith. I hope I've pushed you into the Zenith. Now, that doesn't mean the Amiga's rubbish. The Amiga's a fantastic watch. But the Zenith, just a little bit more specialized. It makes you a wees, a little bit more elitist, a little bit more. It just separates you from those jerks, jerks at work. So there you go, guys. That is my opinion. That is just my opinion. You tell me what you think. You tell me what you think. You put some comments, nasty comments down below. You like, you subscribe, you tell your fuckhead friends, and you put a few nasties down below. You click the bell. You click the bell twice because you subscribe and you click on for updates. That's the way you go. And you wear your Zenith. You're a weiss. You're a professional collector. You know your shit. That is the truth. Until next time, ciao!